Welcome back to another edition of Dale Does Service Now. I'm your host, Dale, and today we're going to do a little thing called an app repo demo. But before we get into it, we're going to talk about a couple of things around deployment methods. You've got really two main ways that you can build and deploy your apps, and that's through the traditional way of update sets and app repo. With update sets, the developer sometimes is going to be the same person as the platform admin. They're going to build an app in the dev environment using either Studio or the next experience, or maybe they're still on UI 16. The changes that they make to their app and the things they create go into an update set. The platform admin is going to move that update set to the test instance, make sure it works, and then they're going to move that on to the prod instance. There are tools where the developer can be delegated access to do this themselves, but a lot of times it's the platform admin doing it. And if you're going to use update sets, make sure you BSTB. Be sure to batch. Now, when we talk about application repository, we have the same environments. We have mostly the same tools. The developer is still going to build things in Studio and the next experience and they can build either a global app or a scoped app. When they're done, they're gonna publish their changes to the application repository straight from Studio in the dev environment. Now, App Repo is not new. It's actually been around since 2016 in the Geneva release. It came out at the same time as scoped apps. Now, once they've published that app, that platform admin is gonna do the same thing. They're gonna to go to test and install the app and they're going to go to prod and install the app there as well. Now, we're going to show today, you can actually delegate this installation function to other people, and they don't have to have the platform admin role. One more thing to, it's important to point out with app repo, it is hosted by ServiceNow and not on your ServiceNow instance. That way, all of your instances have access to it. So let's get started and take a look at that demo. So there's really three main steps. You're gonna build the app, you're gonna publish it, and you're gonna install it. Our favorite character is still Sydney. In this scenario today, Sydney is an app creator. She's not an admin, she's not an app engine user, she's just an app creator. She'd like to build some apps on the service app platform at her company. And what she really wants to do is she has a simple form that she's gonna build as a catalog item to put on the service portal so people can fill it out. And then she wants a little table to store the submissions that people send in using that form. Today, she's just using email and a spreadsheet. So this is really gonna help her out. So before she gets started, there's actually one little thing that we have to do. So today, the platform admin role will be played by yours truly, Dale. And we actually need to give Sydney one specific role in the dev environment to let her access Studio and create the apps. It's the SN underscore G underscore app underscore creator dot app underscore creator. But for short, we're just going to call it the app creator role. So let's do a quick little scene change over to Dale, the service now platform administrator to add roles to people obviously is through groups. And so I have went ahead and set up a group for Sydney. I'm gonna go down here to groups under the user administration menu. And you see I've made a group called Studio App Creators. And in there I've got one member, that's Sydney Carter. And I've already given her the app creator role. This is gonna allow her access to Studio so she can build her application. So back over here, we've already done that. And now Sydney can start building her app. So when Sydney's here, she's in the dev environment. She normally would have to log out and log back in to get that new role, but I've already went ahead and done that. So from here, she can just type in Studio and open up Studio and you see she can actually create an application. So we'll create one called My First App uh, by Sydney and we'll hit create and now this is not going to be a full demo on how to build an app we have other videos for that so let's go ahead and just cut to the chase boom there's her first app 
It is a scoped app, but she could have made it a global app. She could have done the same thing. But to make this easy, let's make sure we have at least one thing in the app so it's not entirely empty. Think of a scoped app as just, just a container for all of the files and components that make up your app uh, surrounded by some security that says whether other apps or people can actually get into that application. Let's even say, oh, this role requires a subscription. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna keep it nice and good. So we would normally go through here, we would create additional catalog items, as many as we want, record producers, tables, whatever Sydney needs to build, she can build in here. And when she is ready to publish her app, oh, oh, let's go back to the PowerPoint. She needs to publish the app that she just built. She's gonna publish it to the app repo just like that. She's gonna click publish and it's gonna go out to that external app repo hosted by ServiceNow. So here in studio, she'll click file, publish. You can see she's got some nice details here. Version 1.0, uh, best release ever. There we go. And she'll just hit submit and that's it. ServiceNow takes care of the rest. No need for an update set. It's going to go ahead and commit any currently open update sets. They get in the app and they get deployed as part of part of version 1.0.0. So that is all Sydney had to do to build and publish her app. So what is she going to do next? She's going to install the app. So back to our diagram. We've got to do one little thing first before she can install the app on her own. Now on the platform admin, I have a thousand things to do and I trust Sydney. It'll be nice for her to be able to take care of this on her own. So let's go back over here to Dale platform administrator, check out the test environment. I've got a yellow logo, a yellow banner in the corner, and I'm just waiting on that header to load. Boop. There we go. Boop. And there we go. Nice sound effects there, Dale. Why, thanks, Dale. So let's go down here to user administration groups. And I've created a group for Sydney to inherit this role. And it is going to be called the App Installers. Very exciting. So the App Installers group is going to grant Sydney two roles. The first role is app client user and the second is app client company installer. If you want a description of these roles and the roles I previously mentioned, look for the links down in the description. But in a nutshell, she only needs these roles in the test and prod environment. Client user says she can install any apps from the app repo. Client company installer is she can only install apps that her company has created. So back over here, we're good to go. And now Sydney can install that app in the test and the prod environment. So to install it in test, she would go to all, she would go to my company applications, and I'm just gonna hit refresh because I was already on the page there. And that is gonna refresh the apps. So if I go back here, oh, there we go. It is refreshing. I'm gonna click not installed. Right now this test instance is pinging the app repo and saying, hey, what apps are out there that Sydney's company has published? It's gonna come back and show them. And we named hers my first app. Whoop, no apps in this category. My, for, there it is, there it is. Uploaded by Sydney on November 29th. That's when I recorded this video. And she can just hit install. It's gonna say, ah, Ah, Sydney, pick a subscription. Make sure you map the subscription that this app is going to be associated with. Since Sydney's company has some app engine, she's going to associate that to the app engine subscription. Now, this capability has been around for years. It didn't just come out in 2022. It's been around since the 2010s. You can delegate this access to someone to allow them to deploy and install apps, but make sure they know what you want done in your company and you're all on the same page about when things get installed and who is installing them and probably follow some change management practices. Now I'm gonna skip installing that in prod because it would be the exact same process. So to recap, Sydney needed to build an app. She got access from Dale in the dev environment, the app creator role. She built the app, she published it, then she went and installed it in Test and Prod. 
If she has a new version of the app, she would follow the same process, change it to version 1.2, and she would install again. Now this wouldn't be YouTube if I didn't ask you to like and subscribe, so please go make sure you smash that subscribe button and also like my video. Thank you, hope you have a good day.